Hello everyone and welcome to the second episode of Kevin Mears Paranormal Encyclopedia. Hopefully you enjoyed our first episode and you got a chance to look at the panel I did at Wicked Fair 2015 with my friends. Um, if you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend you do so. It's very cool. Um, we cover a lot of interesting subjects and it's a good range of viewpoints. So tonight we're going to talk a little bit more about demons. I talked a lot in the first episode how I was going to explain more right. Well, here we are. I'm going to talk about where demons come from. I'm going to talk about what demons are, what they could do to you, why they do it. Let's start with the big question. A little demon asks the big demon, where do demons come from? Now this is a really complicated question. There isn't really a single definitive answer. If you ask most Christians, you'll get a story that goes more like less like this. So God had his angels. Um, how many there were, nobody really knows. Um, lots being the simplest answer. Above the angels were the archangels, of course. And one in particular was a guy by the name of Lucifer. Lucifer was the most beautiful angel. He was the most perfect. The Bible describes him as a guardian cherub being covered in precious stones. Um, and Lucifer becomes proud. He decides that he will become like the Most High, he will ascend his throne above the heavens, that he will essentially become God. He says his I will, God says no, you won't. And then Michael rallies the armies of heavens. Uh, Michael's one of the other archangels. We'll be getting into angels in probably the next episode. Um, and he casts Lucifer down into hell. Now, there's a lot of confusion here between who's Lucifer, who's Satan. Are they the same person? Are they different people? There's a fair amount of debate about this throughout history. Um, the great poet... Oh, dang it. What's the guy's name? Milton. John Milton. Actually had them as separate individuals. Some, the, some angelologists and demonologists throughout history have thought they were two separate beings. Generally speaking, the consensus today would be Lucifer was his name when he was an angel. The name Lucifer means Lightbringer. It comes from Latin. Satan is his name after the fall. It comes from Hebrew. It means adversary. Remember we talked about the origin of, de of devil, the word devil and the origin of the word Satan in the last episode? Here we are again. So that's the one theory most of us know. You can find it in Revelations 12, 7 through 9 is when they certainly talk about the war in heaven between Satan and his angels. But it's not the one that everyone accepts. There's in fact two other major theories in Christianity and in Judaism. One of which is based on Revela uh, excuse me, Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6, verse 6 talks about the sons of God who lust after the daughters of men. Now, the sons of God and these daughters of men have children, and these children are giants. They're men of great renown. They're very remarkable individuals. Now, in some of the apocryphal literature, particularly the book of Enoch, these children, these Nephilim, to use the ter correct term for them, which means fallen, are an abomination before the eyes of God. God destroys the world in a flood. You know, Noah, two of every animal. Now the spirits of these children are your demons. Now on top of that, well what about the parents? Who were the parents? Why were the children so unusual? There's a lot of different theories about that. Um, some theories connect them to Cain and his children. Some theories connect him them to, again, particularly in the Book of Enoch, this idea of fallen angels, that these angels, the sons of God, fell in love with human women, the daughters of men, and interbred. Um, supposedly these particular angels, called the Grigori, were, given, were sent to particularly teach man, teach man agriculture, teach man farming, teach man magic. Um, and down the road we may be talking about them more because we'll be talking about the Atlantis theories and we're going to be talking about aliens and how all of this might interrelate. 
But to get back on target, let's talk about theory number three. This is a really weird one. So, the third theory. This relates to the first chapter of the book of Genesis. And like I said, this gets a little weird. So in Genesis 1, it talks about the creation of the earth and the creation of man and woman. And then it talks about the creation of the Garden of Eden and the creation of Adam and Eve. It's to a lot of modern readers and throughout history to a lot of readers this talking about the dis creation of the world twice seems a little weird now there's the main theory about why it does that which is more likely in my opinion and then there's the weird one we're gonna get into so your first theory is simply put that in a lot of ancient texts particularly like the Bible you start, you talk about an idea once, then you talk about it again in a second time, and you go into greater detail. Then there's where we get weird. Story goes, God created beings before man, intelligent beings. These intelligent beings were very flawed and very wicked. God destroys them, starts over again which is where Adam and Eve comes in. I don't particularly buy this theory, but there's some Jewish texts, particularly within Kabbalistic lore, that expound upon it, and that basically the souls of this first creation are where demons come from. And certainly, it would give some other explanation for why they don't like God and why they don't like man. But again, it just seems a little... It seems like you're making a big deal out of nothing, in my opinion. This is another theory we're going to get into again when we took, talk about Lilith. I promise that's coming. It's not going to be the next issue, episode. Like I said, that's going to be angels. Because re to really get the whole picture here, you're going to have to understand holy angels as well as fallen angels. But we are going to be talking about Lilith. And we're going to be blowing some lids off of a lot of misconceptions. For now, though, demons. Okay, so there's the other theory, which is the children of Lilith. That is something we're going to get into in the Lilith episode. But, so these main three theories, which one's right? Are any of them right? Um, I don't know. I really wish I could say, oh, this is definitely the solution. The Bible certainly provides strong evidence for the fallen angels being real. I mean, again, Revelation 12, 7, 9. But it does talk about the Nephilim. Um, for example, Goliath is talked about as being an Anakim. Anakim is another word for the Nephilim. So certainly the Nephilim are something important. Um, but are they why the angels fell? Or did the angels fall, become demons and devils, and then create the Nephilim? I'm inclined to think Lucifer fell because of his pride, and then Lucifer came about and created the de created the Nephilim, along with some of his chiefs, through procreating with humans. Could I be wrong? Absolutely. I don't know for certain the origins of all of this. It's a big question. Um, it's a question theologians have been arguing about for a long time. They still argue about it to a degree, although for the most part in mainstream Christianity... The fallen angel thing is the main theory that everyone accepts. Some of you probably have never heard the other ones. Don't feel bad. It's one of those obscure things that people, nerds like me who get into this stuff study. It's not something you're going to find out about in Sunday Catechism, for example. But those are your theories about where demons come from. The, the, the way, one of them might be the way that a daddy demon would tell a baby demon, yes, this is where you came from. 
On the other hand, it may all be wrong. We don't know. There's a lot of open questions when it comes to this subject. I wish I could give you more distinct answers. But the thing that makes the fallen angel theory work so well is it explains what we see. Good theories in science ex you know, explain and predict. Well, if angels fell and were thrown out of heaven at God's behest, this gives them a pretty understandable reason to be angry with God. Now the Bible says man was made in the image of God. As God's favorite creation, because we're made in his image, that gives them a reason to despise us. And if, if demons are fallen angels, fallen spirit beings, they've never been physical beings, they've always been spirits. Which would explain why they're so resentful of the fact that we're flesh and blood and they've never been. Whereas, if they had been the firstborn creation, or if they had been the children of, the fallen, of other angels, they would have had that experience. It doesn't rule out those experiences, but it does suggest that the third, th that the first theory is the most likely. So we talked a little bit about Christian ideas about where demons have come from. So I want to talk a little bit about two other types of demons out there. Um, Non-Christian demons. Although for the time being, and we're going to get into much more detail about other types of demons and other types of folklore down the road. But as a free bonus, we're going to talk about two types of demons from the other two major monotheistic religions of the world. Judaism and Islam. So it, we'll start with Judaism, which is obviously the oldest of the three. Um, specifically, we're going to be talking about what's called the Dibbuk. D-Y-B-B-U-K. The word Dibbuk means unclean spirit. In Jewish lore, in the older texts, it's an unclean spirit. It's a demon. It's really all that's said about them. They're not necessarily this big concept of fallen angels. But there's an interesting idea that came in later that Dibbuk's are the souls of the dead. Now we all know the classic ghost story of the ghost has unfinished business and that's why it comes back. That's what Dibbuk's do. They have some bit of business here on this world that they haven't finished yet and they come back. Now they don't have a physical body anymore. They're spirits. They're ghosts. So they possess people to get that done. Um... There are other types of human spirits in Jewish mythology. Dibbuks are generally the most wicked, the most evil, the ones that possess people to do bad things. They're m the ones that more or less come closest to the Judeo-Christian de or to the Christian demon in concept. Now let's talk about jinn. Just about everybody this these days has heard of genies, right? You've got Robin Williams, you've got Barbara Eden. Genies are popular. Genies come from Arabic mythology. They actually predate Islam a bit, but particularly we're, I'm going to talk about the Islamic jinn. Now, Islam believes there are three major types of created intelligent being in the universe. There's angels, and in Islam, unlike Christianity, angels do not have free will. So angels are incapable of falling. The other two types of beings are the ones that have free will. God creates man out of clay, just like in the Bible. God creates the jinn out of smokeless fire. Gives them both free will. God decrees that man is the greatest of the three and commands that the jinn and the angels bow before man. Now, the angels bow. They obey. They obey. That's all they can do. The jinn refuse. The problem isn't that the jinn don't love God, because in Islam they do. The problem is jinn 
won't obey man. They won't admit that we're superior. Okay, so there's two other types of demons, other types of other religious traditions, and the way that they're seen there. Um, again, and there, there's others. I mean, every religion has its evil spirits. Many of them have versions of where they come from. It's hard to say without you know, having a chat with God and saying, okay, so which one's right? Um, that gives you some kind of idea. And again, the bigger. A lot of people, when I do lectures, and if you watch the, vi the panel, you'll see this, will ask me about, well, other types of spirits, what's a spirit, what's a demon, what's the difference? Um, it's a good question, and as I said in, in the other video, but I'll go real quickly, do it again before I cl close up for the night. The main concern I have is I'm, I'm not a theologian. I'm not here to debate the great questions of Christianity or any other major religion. I don't have that kind of understanding of the ancient languages and theology and all the other things to do that. I'm a really practical kind of guy. When I talk about demons, I'm talking about malevolent spirits. Now, they could be demons in the Judeo-Christian sense. They could be dibooks. Or they could be any one of a million other things out there. I really don't care. If a person has a one of these spirits in their house, you don't need to sit there and have a long conversation with it. You go, so are you this? No? Okay. Are you this? No? Hmm. Well, wait, 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 wait. Are you this thing? It's not relevant. I'm not here to study it and poke it with a stick and figure out what makes it tick. Have you tried not being a demon today? That's not, not me. I'm here to help the person with the problem. It's a very interesting question to me, what is it really? But in, at the end of the day, that doesn't help me solve the immediate problem. And it's kind of the way you've got to look at this. It's Where the spirit comes from is secondary to what you need to do about the spirit if it's a problem. If it's not a problem, then you can sit there and try and figure out what it is to the cows come home. Because it's not a problem. Why, are you, why do you have to worry about getting rid of it? And there are spirits out there that aren't that big a problem. You know, there are lots of types of hauntings where nobody's a threat and no no one's being hurt. And then you can start poking it with a stick and asking your question and trying to figure things out. Will you get an answer? I don't know. But you get that opportunity. I don't get called on those types of cases. I'll explain it real simple the way that my own mentor would put it. We're not... People like me, people like Lou, people like Ed, aren't the people that get called when somebody's hearing footsteps in their hallway where the people you call when you're in a hotel room too terrified to go home so yeah I don't get the chance to, to play philo philosopher with this stuff I get the chance to to deal with it on, on the ground figure out what's wrong and fix it do I sometimes regret that I can't get into the more philosophical stuff when I'm on the ground yeah sometimes but it's the world I live in um, I'm not and for that matter I'm not ruling out other possibilities. I do believe there are fallen angels. I do believe there are other things out there than fallen angels. And we're going to get into things like elementals and fairies. And what are they? And are they something else? Are they, And my answer isn't necessarily going to be your, your typical modern Judeo-Christian. Everything's either an angel or a demon. But my main concern is things that pose a danger to people, not what something is. A magician, a theologian, a psychic has a little bit of different perspective on it because they have abilities and they have training I don't. And that's not my concern. Uh, certainly I can differ there's some ways to differentiate without being psychic between ghosts and demons. And we'll get into that as time goes on. But my concern is is it a threat and what are we going to do about it if it is? 
So, um, that wraps things up for now. You got a little bit of a better idea of where these things come from, hopefully. I want to go over some more things you want you shouldn't be aware of, um, particularly related to questions you may have. I'm going to be doing a frequently asked questions video very soon because there are certain questions I've heard a dozen times. Um, it doesn't mean I don't mind. I mind hearing them again, but if I know the questions come in, I may as well head it off at the pass. I want to say you're welcome to put questions in the comments. I'll, I will try to get back to them. Um, if I think it's a particularly good question, I may answer it live on the air. There are certain questions I'm not going to answer. I'm not going to answer them in a video. I'm not going to answer them in the comments. I want to go over those now and explain my reasons. Um, obviously, I'm not, I'm not monitoring these comments in any way. I'm not requiring approval to be able to post. I don't want to do that. But I'm not going to respond to certain types of comments. Um, so first type of comment I don't respond to is... Um, well, I guess destructive criticism might be the best way to put it. You know, if you have legitimate criticism about what I'm saying, if you have legitimate criticism about how the show is being handled, please feel free to share. And I'm not blocking that. If you want to tell me I'm a giant idiot, don't expect me to dignify that with an answer. Um, constructive criticism is always welcome. Childish insults are going to be treated like childish insults. You're not going to get a response to them, nor do you deserve one. Um, if I get enough of them, I would actually go to the moderated comments, and I don't want to do that. So try to keep it civil, even if you don't like what I, if you think I'm an idiot. Tell me, heck, just tell me why you think I'm an idiot and what I should be doing differently. You know, constructive criticism, people. This isn't a complicated concept. So, second type of question I won't answer. I'm not going to answer questions about specific groups, organizations, or individuals involved in the paranormal unless I have some, unless I know them very well and have worked with them directly. As a general rule, if I mem mention a group on here, it's somebody I've worked with or I know well enough by reputation to say something about. On the whole, I'm not looking to criticize other groups. I see it as unprofessional. I also, quite frankly, think there's enough politics in the paranormal community right now without me go telling, saying who I think is good and who I think is bad. Um, now, if I don't mention a group on here, it doesn't mean I don't think well of them. There are plenty of groups I'm never going to mention I like and respect. But if I've never worked with the people, if I don't know the people personally, I'm less inclined to talk about them. Um, there are certainly groups like the Paranormal Research Society of New England, um, run by John Zaffis, is an excellent group. I have nothing negative to say about that group or about John Zaffis. He's a good investigator. Um, or in, uh, Lorraine Warren and Tony Spear running New England Society of Psychic Research. I respect Lorraine immensely. I have nothing, I'm not going to say anything bad about them. I think very highly of the work that she's done in her life. Um, there is the Par um, Paranormal Research and Education. And forgive me if... I'll get the name and say it again later, but it's run by a very good friend of mine. Um, again, wonderful things to say about them. It's a very professional group. Um, and there are groups I don't particularly like. I'm um, not going to name them. I'm not going down that road. I don't want to start flame wars. I am going to give you a real good idea of what I think of certain groups just by talking about what I think that they don't. Um, there are certain prominent groups that you may have already noticed I disagree with just by the fact that I'm a demonologist. I'm not saying everything's just little harmless ghosties. Um, but I'm not going to name names. I'm not going to bash. That's not the point of these videos. Um, number three, I am not going to start giving names of all the demons I've encountered. I get this question a lot. It's one I don't answer, and it's one I don't answer for a very good reason. It actually has a part B, as it were, which is I won't give you instructions on how to summon a demon. I am a Christian demonologist, boys and girls. I am here to help people who have a demonic problem. I am not here to teach you how to get your own very own demonic problem. Giving you how-to instructions is a good recipe for getting you in trouble. Giving you the name of the particular spirits is a good way to get you in trouble. The more intention you give spirits, the more energy they have. And that's a bad thing. Um, it, I would prefer people to not mention in comments, but if you ask me about a particular demon's name, or if you ask me for certain demon names, I'm not going to give you the information. It, with two exceptions. One is if you're a, a member of clergy, particularly that can prove your bona fides, who need, honestly needs help with the case, then I'll be happy to help you with research. 
if you're a member of a legitimate investigation group that again can provide some background so so I can confirm you know what you're doing I'll be happy to provide you help you with research but if you're just randomly demanding demon names I'm gonna seriously question why and if I don't know who you are and I don't have proof that you're not gonna use them for something thing nefarious I'm not going to help you um those are really the main things. Um, it's really not that hard. The only thing I'm just saying is keep it civil even if you don't like what I'm doing. Um, hopefully you do like what I'm doing. Hope you will choose to subscribe and continue to watch my videos. Um, please show me what's working. Again, if you really like these videos, please share them with your friends. Get, encourage them to watch them. If you think I'm a complete idiot, share them with them anyway so everybody can get a good laugh. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I have more videos coming. Uh, the current plan is to try and do a minimum of one a week. Uh, at the moment, I'm planning on doing more than that. Just by virtue of I'm just getting started, I want to build up some material for everybody to watch and enjoy and get everybody excited and interesting and to get you all to watch it some more. Um, I do have some guests coming up. Uh, at least some of the folks at the par on the panel that I've already posted have expressed some interest in coming on. I have another one... Um, lined up once I get some technical requirements sorted out he's trying to figure out how to get people that don't live locally on here since I don't have the money right now to go driving all over the country so I can get the really awesome guests I have lined up um, but once we have that figured out I have someone very exciting who's been kind enough to agree to come on the show I'm not going to tell you who it is yet you just got to keep tuning in uh, so that's it for now I want to thank again my lovely producer and editor Amisha Campbell my fiance and I want to thank you all for watching have a wonderful night Say.